Have you ever left home only to realize after you've gotten on the road that you forgot to bring an HT with you? Honey, this is such a lovely trip. Nothing could go wrong. Oh wait, I forgot my HT. Ah! We're all gonna die! Don't worry, little Timmy. Mom and Dad are okay, because they're following the advice that I'm giving in this video on how to set up an emergency communications go bag for your car. And today, we're gonna be using the very inexpensive and very effective Baofeng UV5R. Coming up this time on Ham Radio Tube. And it all starts with this bag. This is a tactical Molly like first aid pouch thing, but I need to perform some surgery on it first because there's too much stuff on here that I don't care about. It's got that, don't need that. And it also has, I don't know why, but this little strap here. I don't care about that. So we're just gonna cut it off. Beautiful, much better. And looking inside, this thing actually has a lot of storage. I have another one of these that I've used for like all kinds of connectors and stuff, but you can see we've got this little fold out pouch that's got some zipper stuff in there. We've got a pouch there. We've got some Molly there, Molly there, pouches here, all kinds of pouches. These are, these are really cool bags. They're really cheap too. I think I paid, I don't know, 12 or 13 bucks for this on Amazon. I'll leave links for as much of this stuff in the description as I can if you want to pick this up, uh, you can go to my Amazon store and find all this stuff. So that's the bag. And now for the star of the show, the Baofeng. In this case, these are, this is a two pack of the GT5R Pros. And I have unlocked these to transmit on all the frequencies, including 220 megahertz. So we're going to use these guys here. Got a battery and a radio for each one. Don't need the manual. I'm gonna use the programming cable. I am gonna keep the stock HTs. This particular pack came with a couple uh, extended antennas. You could use those if you want. I'm going to use something different, but I do want the Baofeng belt clips. And uh, I think that's it. We are not gonna use those chargers and I'll show you why in a minute. These are the stock batteries that came with my Baofangs. They only charge with those charging docks. So I'm not using these. I purchased these off of Amazon. These are about 12 bucks each, and these are replacement batteries for the UV5R. Same capacity, I did a capacity test on these. I did not get 1800 milliamp hours. I got about 1300 milliamp hours, but that's also what I got out of like one of my old Baofang batteries. I can get 24 hours out of receive on these, so I'm happy. The difference is these charge with USB-C. So that is what we are gonna be putting on these radios because I always have something USB-C with me, whether it's a battery bank like this or one of my battery boxes or even just the, the USB port in my car, I have a USB-C charger on there, so we can now have our Baofangs charge with USB-C. And I have already programmed the, all the repeaters in my area, as well as I've unlocked this. So if I want to go to say somewhere in the GMRS frequencies in the 465, you can see we're keying up. I've also managed to unlock these by opening them up in Chirp. You just go to the VHF frequency width and you change it, I think it was set to like 174, you just open it up to 225 and look at this. See, it's transmitting on 224 and this is receiving. They don't put out much power on 220, but do they work? Yes. So we got all the frequencies. I've also programmed, I've got some marine frequencies in here. I've got some MERS frequencies. And then I've also got the NOAA weather frequencies and all the GMRS slash FRS frequencies in here as well. So we got everything done and done with our USB-C chargeable. These are the GT5R Pros. But, and the way you unlock these, just turn it off and then push the PTT, the monitor button. It's, it's really awkward. 
Um, push the PTT, the monitor, and the VFO button at the same time. Turn it on, and you'll see factory like that, and now it's wide open. So there you go. We've also got the programming cable for these because I pretty much always have my computer with me. I, it, you know, learn how to program these by hand. Don't rely on computers, but it's nice. And then because all my computers have USB-C, we've got, of course, upside down first, uh, USB-A to USB-C adapter. And then I also have just this little cable here that's USB-A to four USB-C ports. So that should do fine. These aren't PD charging. They're not fast charging or anything. So just a cheapo cable will work, but this way, I can charge both at the same time. I'm not using this power bank for this. I'm just using this as an illustration, but see, red lights, they're charging just like that. So that way I can charge them both at the same time. So now let's get everything in this bag here. I think we're going to, we've got some Molly straps here so we can clip our beautiful bow fangs to those. And then we'll take our stock antennas and I'm just gonna throw them in this Molly. We've got our charge or our programming cable with our USB-C adapter. Go ahead and throw that there. We've got our super elastic signal stuff, signal stick antennas for when we want an extended antenna to get our range. Cause they, these, these stock UV5R antennas, they're not terrible. I mean, I've, I've worked repeaters a few miles away with them. So we can get, I've got one for uh, a, super elastic, a super elastic signal stuff signal stick for each antenna with the SMA male and uh, our charger, which I will also put there. Sure. Then we can close it up and that is it. And that's the cool thing about this. Like I'm not going for, you know, putting coax and a J pole and all that kind of stuff to hoist antennas up a tree. This is just, you forget a radio, you need to give one out, whatever you've got an emergency radio kit. And yeah, I think Baofangs are just fine for this purpose. Would I trust my life with one? Sure. I've had plenty of conversations on Baofangs and people ask me what I'm using. They told me my audio was great. And then I said I was a UV5R and they couldn't believe it. So now this bag is gonna live in this box. This is a box of like kind of emergency stuff that I keep in my car, which I've put things that I think are useful and some things are kind of dumb in here, but off. I go hiking all the time. Got to have some off. Okay. I've got a lithium iron phosphate car charger in here. This is from Paradan Radio. So if I need to charge my LifePo 4 batteries off my car, I can do that. I've got a compressor to inflate my tires. And here is a battery car jump starter thing. This has saved my butt many times. We've got some toilet paper in there. Don't worry, I do have my portable bidet in my car. It's just in another place. We've got some tent stakes. We've got four lengths of paracord for the tent stakes. Got some hearing protection. And then this is just the stuff that comes with the compressor. So, theoretically, we should be able to put this right there. Okay, and then put our lid on it. And now we have a radio go bag that now lives in this box and this box lives in my car right here along with, I also keep, I've had this for years. This is just a, a toolbox. It's got sockets and wrenches and stuff. It's not a very good one. It's from Harbor Freight and all the pieces fall apart every time you open it. But I've always got stuff for emergencies. And if for some reason, the batteries in those radios are dead the next time I go to use them. It's not that big of a deal because in my back seat, I've always got this battery box. There's a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery in there with USB C PD and USB uh, 3.0. This also has a solar charge controller inside of it. And in my back seat, I keep a 120 watt power film solar panel. But wait, there's more. Most cars have USB outlets in it these days, and I happen to have another cable right here that has a lightning for my iPhone and a USB cable. So even if for some reason I don't have my battery box or it's dead or something, I've still got USB-C charging as well as lightning there so I can charge the batteries that way. What a simple, inexpensive, 
and organized way to have some backup communications in your car. Should you leave home without your HT? Should you be in a group where a couple people don't have HTs? Looking at you, Bill, last year at Hamvention. Uh, whatever the case may be, and be, by having USB-C charging, we're not relying on those stupid cradles. And I've always got a battery with me, so it's not a big deal. I think probably all said and done, maybe around 100 bucks to do all of this. So why not have some spare radios in your car at your disposal for whenever you need them? Guys, my name is Mike K at MRD. Thanks for watching Ham Radio Tube. We'll see you next time. 73.